Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Another exciting day today, and Google has just released Android 9, uh, named Pi, and this is pretty much the end of the Android P beta. It's been officially released for Pixel devices, and of course, those that have been partnered with Google, such as the OnePlus phones, Essential phone, and a couple of others that have had the Android P beta experience, uh, should be out by this fall. And I think some of the source code, at least for Android Pi, has been uploaded or uploading. So maybe in a few months or years, we can see some Android P custom ROMs for our older devices. And I've got my eye on the Nexus 6P there. But this video is going to be updating a rooted Pixel, or Pixel 2 really, or Pixel 2 XL, to the final version, the official version of Android 9. So it doesn't matter if you're from Oreo or on the P developer previews and you're wanting to get your hands on the final version of Android P, uh, this is a video for you. So the first thing we want to download is the SDK platform tools for our operating system. And it's very important that you download the latest one. You want to make sure you have the latest one because down here under the revisions title, you can see when the latest one was actually released. So June, just two months ago, and version 28. And you can check this by doing adb double dash version or fastboot double dash version. So if you're not sure, just download it again. It's not that big and it doesn't really hurt. So just download the one that's right for your operating system. I will have some more details below, or later on I should say, for those who are running a different operating system. But here I'm downloading the one for Windows and you can download the one for Mac and Linux over here as well. So once you've done that, we can move on to, I guess, the most important part the factory image for our Pixel 2 or 2XL. Uh, keep in mind this is also for the original Pixels, but I'll have a, another video for that later. Just scroll down until the very end, and you can see 9.0 with the PPR1 code name, I guess. And there are two here for the Pixel 2 at least. One for Telstra, because Telstra down here likes to do special stuff. So they have a special build of Android Pi for themselves. But if you're not on Telstra, you can just download the one that doesn't say anything afterwards. So I've downloaded this one, but again if you're with Telstra in Australia, uh, you probably want to download this one instead. Once you've downloaded the factory image in the same fashion, you just click on the blue link and download it. You want to download the latest version of Magisk. Now I want to reiterate that rooting your phone uh, is optional. You don't have to do it even only because you've rooted it before, because maybe, maybe you don't want to root it anymore. You don't have to flash Magisk again and you don't have to boot up TWRP. You can just flash the factory images if you wanted to. But we're rooted here and we're gonna keep that because we have some nice modules on Magisk or maybe you just need root access, right? So we're gonna use the latest beta version here. Just click on the orange download link and they'll download the latest version for you. And once you have that saved, you also want to download the latest version of the TWRP custom recovery for our Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL. I'll leave a link to that down below. And what you want to do is go over to the primary downloads, depending on whether you're closer to the Americas or Europe. I'm just going to click on the Americas and just scroll down and download the latest image file. I won't be installing TWRP because of sometimes it's not able to decrypt the data partition and it'd be quite useless if I wasn't able to get into Android uh, to do stuff anyway. So I'm just going to download the image, but if you're wanting to install TWRP to your phone, and you also want to download the installer and just flash that before we flash Magisk. I'll let you know when the time comes for that. So just download the image here and just save and then click on this the bigger download link and just save that somewhere as well. So once you've downloaded everything, you should have four or five files depending on if you're installing TWRP or not. And to get started, we're gonna do some nice extraction. So we're gonna open up the platform tools zip file just like that. We're gonna open up the platform tools again and what we want to do is extract a few files here. So I'm going to extract ADB EXE and the two ADB DLLs. And then underneath, I'm going to extract the Fastboot EXE, the Libwin pthread one DLL, and all the Make2FS or F2FS EXEs and configuration files. So that's about eight different files that we need to extract. Of course, if you already have the platform tools available and you know they are up to date, then you don't need to do this step. But uh, just in case, if you're not sure, just do it anyways. And next up, we're going to open up the factory image. Open up the folder here, the PPR1 folder. And we're just going to extract three files, like so, and drag that out. We're just going to type a few commands to get our phone updated. 
So we'll just wait for this to extract and finish up. Okie dokie. So once that's done, we can close the factory image. We won't be needing that anymore. And now you can see here, we have a ton of different things in our folder. And the last thing we want to do is copy over the latest version of Magisk Beta. Uh, copy that over to our phone. Or you can use ADB and push it over if you're so inclined. So I'm just going to change my device's USB mode to file transfers. And you can see the Pixel 2 has come up on Windows. And I'm just going to paste it right here in my internal storage. You can see I already have it here. Once you've got it copied, you also want to copy over the TWRP installer if you feel like installing it as well over to your internal storage. Once you've done that, you can close that and we can get started right away. So we're going to run a few commands here, whether you're using the command prompt or the terminal window if you're on Mac or Linux or if you're using PowerShell for those who like using that. Um, you can do it which way you like, but all you need to do is change directories of that terminal window of that console to where your ADB executables are. So in this case, mine is in E and in the Android folder on my E drive. Now a quick way to do this on Windows, you can type in CMD in the address bar like so, and that'll open up a new command prompt window in the same directory. Uh, maybe you've added it to your right click contextual menu. You can just uh, open a new you know, PowerShell window or a terminal window here. You can hold shift and right click on Windows and you can get an option to open the PowerShell window here. So uh, it's quite easy to do so. So one thing I'd like to mention before we continue on this process is that you should seek to back up everything you can off of your device and copy it onto your computer. You can use apps such as Swift Backup, is the one I've been using for a while, uh, just to get your apps and your app data backed up for you in case things go wrong. Because you never know when you're doing stuff like this, there's always a slight chance that something might go wrong and your phone will need to be reset or something similar of that nature where your data won't be there when you turn it back on. So your photos, videos, music, downloads, your apps, your apps data, things like that should be backed up. I haven't done a TWRP backup in a long time, but I have been doing some app backup. So it's quite important to make sure you all your stuff is backed up because there is a chance of losing it, but not on purpose, of course. So just before we start, there's one thing that we should do as a precautionary thing uh, when it comes to booting the TWRP image and flashing Magisk again after updating is that we should look to remove the screen lock that we have currently so TWRP can access our data partition. But if you're sure enough that TWRP can do so as it did on your current security patch, then you might not need to do this. But for me, it hasn't worked for a few months. So this is what I have to do. So in the case that it doesn't work, you can just boot up into Android again, tap on security and location, change the screen lock from a pattern pin or password just to swipe and then remove your device protection as well. You will need to add your fingerprints again, which is a little bit annoying, and all the apps that you have configured to use your fingerprints with uh, need to be set up again, at least the security part of that. So for example, my banking app uh, won't allow me to use my fingerprints. I just need to run through that setup process again. So once you've got that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and boot our phone into the bootloader. Now I also presume that you have your drivers installed already, and to reboot into the bootloader, we're going to tap on restart and hold the volume down button now as soon as the screen turns black or it freezes. Now I was talking about drivers and I would have presumed that you already have your drivers installed uh, when you rooted your phone initially. But if not, I do have a video of that down in the more info below. So here is the bootloader and once we're plugged in like that, it doesn't matter what it says in the selected items part. We can go back to our computer here. So there's a very simple command in fastboot that we can type to check if our device is connected, and that is fastboot devices. I'm going to hit enter. And this will look for our phone. And if it's connected, you'll see the fastboot interface and your device's serial number that's connected. So now we're going to go ahead and flash the new bootloader image. So we'll type in fastboot flash bootloader, leave a space after bootloader, and drag in the bootloader image. I'm going to hit enter. Now this is uh, irrespective of which current slot you're on, as we're only going to be flashing the active slots, as I've realized that flashing the other ones doesn't really change anything, because our phone's not going to boot into that anyways. So once you've done the bootloader, we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. We can do this on our phone here, using the volume buttons to change it into 
I think it's up here, restart bootloader, and then you can press the power button on the side to select it, and our phone will reboot into the bootloader. Once it's back in here, we're going to flash the radio image, the updated radio image. So to do that, we're going to type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after the radio word, and we're going to drag in our radio image from our folder, and then press the enter button, and that will flash and update our modem. So once that's done, we're going to reboot our phone into the bootloader once more. This time we're going to type in the fastboot command to do so. We're going to type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. Like so, and hit enter, and our phone should reboot back into the bootloader as well. Once that's in, we can go ahead and now use the update command to update our phone using all the images inside the image zip file. So I don't think it will flash all of these images, but it will flash what the bootloader deems that it should flash, which is most of the files that we need anyways. So we're going to type in fastboot, and then two dashes, we'll type in the word skip dash reboot, and then type in the word update, leave a space after that, and then drag in the image zip file for, from our factory image. I'm going to press enter and you can see it's going to start checking the product and it's going to start extracting all the images that we're going to need in order to update our phone. So right now it's doing this system image. So this will take a while, it's not going to be quick in any way, but um, what we're going to do is just fast forward this until it finishes. And yeah, so if you also encounter any issues, uh, such as an error being thrown out, such as too many links, uh, things like that, you can try rebooting your phone back into the bootloader and unplugging the cable a few times, doing that stuff, and just running the same command again. You won't need to flash the bootloader or radio images again as long as they've gone through properly uh, prior to this, but we're just going to sit back and wait for our phone to finish updating. Okay, you can see that it's finished flashing to slot A and it's done its system B with the system other image and all that. So we can go ahead and boot the TWRP image that we downloaded earlier. This is just so we can reroute our phone. And once again, you don't have to reroute your phone, but if you do want to, uh, you can go ahead and follow these steps right now. Otherwise, you can just reboot your phone uh, normally. So we're going to type in fast boot, boot, leave a space after the word boot, and drag in our TWRP image. Hit enter, and it should download the boot image to our phone, and our phone should automatically reboot into the TWRP image that we gave it. Uh, it might take a while, but hopefully not too long. And since we've removed our screen lock, our phone should boot straight into the main menu of TWRP without us having to enter any passwords or things like that. Okay, so we're in now, and all we have to do is, if you're flashing the TWRP installer, you want to do that first. So you would tap on install, locate the installer, and flash that. I'm not going to do that. But after you flash the TWRP installer, if you want to, the last thing you want to do is flash Magisk. So we're just going to swipe Magisk. I'll swipe to install Magisk, and from there it's going to do its script there, backing up the boot image, patching it, and flashing it again. And once that's done, we can go ahead and reboot our device. Tap on Reboot System in the bottom right hand corner there, and we're just going to wait for our phone to boot up into Android P. Hopefully it boots up with Magisk installed. If not, you can just uninstall Magisk through the provided zip file on the XDA thread, or you can just flash the stock boot image as well. Okay, so our phone has booted up now. It's uh, very quick. So you can see everything is still here and we don't have a screen lock uh, left as it is on Do Not Disturb and all my icons are there, all my apps are there. Nothing's really changed or anything like that. And our uh, wallpaper is still there. So let's uh, just have a look at Android P now, you can see the beta icon has gone away from our uh, notification shade, our quick setting shade. And if we go down to system, and I'll have to blur out my IMEI again. If we go to about phone, and then go to build number, we can see that we are on the Android P build that we just flashed, the PPR1. So the other ones were PPP for preview, I presume. Now it's a release one, so R1, which is nice. And let's just have a look at Magisk real quick. There we go. You can see that's installed properly. Let's see if we pass SafetyNet just as a 
a cool thing to have because you never know when it's going to not work it says the response was invalid but I'm sure we can get another app to check that no it's fine so everything's passing right now and we can add stuff to Magis Kide and all that let's see the modules we have currently blob emoji and that's fine as well so you can see that Magis works and our phone is rooted I guess to double check we can open up a root app such as I guess Swift Backup or Tasker you can see it was granted super user um, access and root access is available there so thanks for watching guys that's how you update your rooted pixel 2 without losing any data to the final official release of Android P and yeah so if you have any questions feel free to leave it down below in the comment section or you can hop over to my discord server and we can chat about it there as well so once again thanks for watching guys it means a lot and as always happy flashing